Hello everyone and welcome to the solutions video for Code Forces Educational Round 122. I've already given up on E because it is way above my league. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain the solutions of A to D. So let's look at problem A. In this problem, we are given a number N which is in this range and uh, greater than equals to 10. Now what we can do is so let's say these are its digits, we can perform an operation and what one operation means is exchanging one of its digits, so let's say it is 542, we can change 5 to something like let's say 7. And then what we want is the resulting number to be divisible by 7 and we want to do minimum operations. So we want to satisfy two constraints, the resulting number should be divisible by 0, sorry divisible by 7 and it also should not have leading zeros in it. So for example, you take this situation, we cannot make five into zero. Don't mind the background noise there. I think there's a lot of background noise. So we can convert, we cannot convert this five to zero because then I will get 0 42, which has a leading zero. So this is not allowed. So I'm going to call this no leading zero. So these are the two, two constraints that I want to work. Now notice here that the number of test cases is less than a thousand and the range of numbers that we can obtain by operation is also less than thousand because even if I make every digit nine, I will still only get nine, nine, nine. So, and all, so we can just check every possible number from one to n that satisfies these two conditions. So no leading zeros if converted from original n, so this is 999 and it is also divisible by 7 and then we see how many how many different digits are there in our current value from n that would be the number of operations for this number and we just take the minimum of it over all the possible values. So this would be an on operation, on solution for one test case and ONT would be 1 is 6 so that works under a second. So let's look at the solution. Okay so I take in the input I take it as a string because I want to check every digit that is easier with strings and uh, count is what is the number of operations I need to get a number that satisfies these two constraints. Initially I'm just saying that it takes infinite times and I have not decided on an answer. So I go from every possible value, one to 999. If it is not divisible by seven, I do not check it. Then I convert it into a string. And if its size is not equals to the size of n. So if n is 47, I cannot check it with 542 because the sizes are different. I cannot get five because there is no number to swap to five. So that is why this is also a continue condition and then I count the number of digits that are not equal that would be the number of operations required so let's say from 542 I want to reach uh, 742 so the number of operations required would be 1 I am exchanging 5 to 7 so num I calculate the number of operations required and if it is less than the previously best number of operations I take I update it and update the answer and then I just print the answer. So that was a pretty simple. A lot of people did it as well. Now let's look at B. I'm surprised as many people did B because uh, maybe I've just gone stupid. So in B, we have a binary string, something like this. And what we can do is we have, we can only do this operation once. We select a subarray. So let's say we select this and we take which is the minority element. So one occur three times and zero occur two times. Since frequency of one is strictly greater than frequency of zero, zero is a minority element here and we can remove every zero in this selected subarray. So we just want to tell how many maximum number of elements we can remove. So to approach its solution, we have to look at the global picture. So let's look at the entire array. Do not look at any subarray. 
look at the entire array so let's say something like this now we will have the frequency of 1 to be something and its length is let's say n and frequency of 0 would be n minus x now if they are not equal if they are unequal right so if they are not equal we can just do one operation and remove the minimum one right and why we can never get a better answer than this because so let's say x is smaller than n minus x okay so what i say is that i can remove x elements which is one and that would be the best case what i can do is select the entire array entire string and the proof that why there is no better solution than this is because if i want to remove so let's say i'm removing rem if that has to be greater than x then that means i am removing zeros because ones are only x and we are doing only one operation but if i want to remove zero i want the number of ones to be greater than to be greater than the number of zeros however this value was at least x plus one so x plus one can never be less than x so proof by contradiction so that is the first thing so if x and n minus x are unequal then i can take the minimum of them and that would be the best answer however if they are equal then what can i do well then let's just remove one of the side elements so obviously i cannot remove so uh, it is n by 2 right this is n by 2 this is also n by 2 now obviously i cannot remove n by 2 because if i want to remove n by 2 i need n by 2 plus 1 and that would be greater than n i don't have that many elements so obviously i cannot remove all of them so you know what i can do i can remove any element so consider only this part of the array okay so do not consider the last element now no matter if it is one or zero now if when you consider this sub array the equality has broken and now one is n by two and the other is n by two minus one and what we can do is take this sub array and remove this and this will always be this will always be the best answer because n by two cannot be possible so if n by two minus one is possible then that means it is the best answer and with that we have our solution that if they are unequal take the minimum of the frequencies if they are equal then n by 2 minus 1 is the answer so here's the implementation i take input i count the frequencies and then i get the minimum of uh, frequency of 0 and 1 if if it is even and answer is n by 2 that is what i'm checking answer can never be n by 2 right so in that case reduce answer by 1 and print the answer so a million ways to write the same thing i just did it a little bit differently now let's look at problem c kill the monster in this we have a character whose health is hc and the damage he can do is dc or yeah and then we have a monster whose health is hm and the damage he can do is dm now when this character and monster fights what happens is the character attacks first taking away dc health and then if the health if the monster is alive that is hm is greater than zero it will attack back and take dm health from character now if character is alive he will attack back and take dc health so whenever someone goes to less than equals to zero health they die and they cannot attack further so this is what keeps keeps on happening and what we want to do is make our character win but it's not necessary that he's able to win it so what we are allowed to do is spend k coins we can spend k coins and with one coin we can either increase the health by a or increase the damage by w okay and now we want to tell that at max spending k coins can we buff up our character's character enough so that he can defeat the monster now if you notice the constraints here the sum of k 
overall test cases does not exceed two times two times ten to the power five. So that means what we can do is we can just try every possible k. We can try every possible k. Now since we are assigning, since we have all total k, right? So what I mean by trying every possible k is that so we use k one and k minus k one. K one for buffing up the health. So health becomes H C plus K one times A, and the damage becomes D C plus K minus K one times B times W. Sorry. So since we are allowed to take K and we don't have to minimize it, I give some part of it on buffing up the health and some part of it on increasing the damage. Now I just want to find one one configuration. Yeah, configuration is the word. So one configuration k one and k minus k one such that this value is enough to defeat the monster. And now because k is less than equals to two e five, I can iterate from zero to k. So k one will go from zero to k, and uh, since k one is zero. I will take k two or k minus k one. So this value was k two, right? So k two is just k minus k one. And why I'm taking all? Because using all will always be the best option rather than using sum. So I take k one from zero to k, and for that I calculate can I defeat the monster? If I can defeat the monster in any situation, in any configuration, then I win. Now let's see how I can decide. In O one, because I have already consumed O n time complexity, or O k, k is two e five. So now I want O n or O one or O log n complexity to determine which will win the character or the monster. So at every step, let's say the new health of the character is H and damage is D. Now monsters. Health is same and damage of is also same. Now, since character starts, it is like the character attacks, and the uh, so character attacks, monster attacks, character attacks, monster attacks. The last attack has to be the characters because then the monster would die and won't be able to make any more attacks. Okay, so that means that the character. That the character has to defeat the monster before he can defeat. Okay, I said I stated the obvious this now. So yeah, what was I saying? Hmm. So let's see how many attacks it takes the monster to defeat the character. So if it takes the monster to defeat two attacks, it takes monster two attacks to defeat the character. How will I find that? Well, let's say health is ten and damage DM is seven. So in one attack, health would be three, and then in the next attack, it would be zero. So it is the ceiling division, right? You can uh, experiment with the values a little bit more to get the intuition that why it is that, but it is a simple arithmetic. Now we know that uh, the monster would take H by DM ceiling division number of moves to defeat. The character. So, if monster takes two attacks, right? Then that means character will have at maximum two attacks. You might be thinking, why here it shows three? No, no, no. This is wrong, because the character did one attack. The monster did one more. The character did one. The monster did second, and now the character would die because it takes two attacks for the character. So this is actually not possible. So character is allowed to defeat the monster in this many moves. And how can we find how many moves it takes for the character? Well, that's same H M divided by D and ceiling. So what we want is this value to be less than equals to health of the health of the hero or character divided by D M. So If this is satisfying for any configuration, 
k1 and k2 and k1 and k2 are calculatable in linear time because k2 is just k minus k1 we can figure out if we can defeat the monster so this is o1 this is okay so the solution is okay and we have solved it so now let's look at the solution So I'm taking the input of the health. Now I'm using DA and DH as Delta A and Delta H, H that I can increase. And uh, now X would be K1. So from zero to K, Y is K2. And I calculate the new health and the attack of, uh, so here A represents D actually. So I started using A for some reason. So this is the required amounts of attacks that the character would take this is the allowed this is the number of attacks monster would take if required is less than equals to allowed i was able to defeat using k coins print yes return out otherwise if i was never able to do that print no all right problem d last problem maybe the editorial would be out by the time contest ends so we have problem d now Okay, this was a good problem. I just hope I do not really, that would be awkward. So, in this problem, we have an array A, where everything is 1 initially, and then we are given a value, array B, so where values are from 1 to 1, 3. Okay, so 7, 3, 2, something like that. What we can do is, we can do an operation on AI, and what that operation is, we say ai is equals to ai plus ai divided by x where x is a positive integer of our choice so we can increment a with some sort of restriction and what we can do is we can make ai equals to pi using some operations and we are allowed to do k operations now what is the result right okay yeah it's single digit right so the final you can say success or what do they call it yeah so the coins we receive we receive ci coins for converting ai into bi okay so we receive ci coins to convert ai into bi and we can convert ai into bi using this type of operation a series of this type of operations okay so now what we want to say is what is the maximum number of coins we can get if the total number of operations we can do is k now for a moment let us assume that we have found what is the optimal amount of operations required so let's call it oi okay so o1 o2 o3 let's say we have found out what is the optimal number of operations required to convert AI into BI? Now, if we know that, right, if we know that, this actually transforms to the original knapsack problem. Let me show you how. Now, every num everything takes some number of operations, right? O1, O2, O3. So, that can be its weight. So, it, let's rename it to weight w1 w2 w3 wn why i have written five here and the total weight that i can take is k because that's the total number of operations i can do right and then and then i am also given the value the cost or sorry the coins the value that i get on con on taking some weight so c1 c2 or i can call it the classical v1 v2 so C gets renamed to V. Okay. And now this is the classical knapsack problem. We are given weights of some things. The values they give us. We can take a, at maximum K weight of items and we want to maximize the value. So this is knapsack. However, there is a catch. That is W is bounded by 1E3. Sorry, N is bounded by 1E3 but k is bounded by 1e6 so if we do 
the dp of nk we will run out of memory limit because one e nine ints is a lot so what do we do well you can actually use the space optimized gp here so knapsack works on this right i'm assuming if you're trying to absolve d you know knapsack but i will still tell you a little bit so knapsack works on this principle that we either choose something choose to take something or don't choose to take something and then we build up from that towards the final optimal solution and to do that okay so hopefully this much is clear now i will go to how to optimize how to space optimize this solution so originally what we do in knapsack is this Let me just draw this grid with awkward silence. And then I have the items, item 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is the weight, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Actually, let's call it 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, what I do is, I calculate, so what dpij, so it's like dpij. What this represents is the maximum number of points I can get if I take up to i so if it is like 3 comma 2 right so if I take up to the elements that I get in the first three elements so if I take up to elements if I take elements up to index 3 and the weight allotted maximum weight that I can take is 2 then what is the maximum value I get so this is what the dp ij represents now what how this dp works is let's say i'm calculating what dp 3 comma 3 would look like so there are two options for us we can either choose this element this item or not choose it if i don't choose it then i will set the dp value 3 comma 3 to be equals to 2 comma 3 so dp 3 comma 3 is equals to 2 comma 3 because if i'm not picking it then whatever was the optimal for choosing up to first two elements and this much maximum weight would be the optimal answer however if i were choosing this so this was two right however if i was choosing this then let's say its weight was one or let's say its weight was two so if its weight was two then that means i need two em two empty space so one two so I will have to take from this column so how I take this is so from the previous index i now why previous so it builds cumulatively right ij represents what is the maximum value we get choosing elements up to index i so we could have chosen in anything so we take up to element i minus 1 which is 2 here and then we subtract the weight so 3 minus 2 so we get here 2 comma 1 so we take the co the value we had here and then add to it what value using item 3 provides us so value 3 so this is so we take the maximum of these two values so we either don't take it in which case take whatever was the maximum without considering this index this element however if i do take this value then i have to consider what is the maximum without taking this and uh, also leaving the space of w3 so this is how it usually this is how the 2d dp works now you you notice that dpij so dpij is maximum of i minus 1 comma j uh, writing this is such a pain using a mouse so it's maximum of dpi minus 1j and dpi minus 1 the j minus whatever weight it had plus the value it had right so dpi j depends on dpi minus 1 so because it depends on i minus 1 we can actually optimize the space and uh okay let me just go erase a little bit so how we can optimize this space is uh, let's say we have built 
let's say we have built this okay if you have built this and we want to build this value too what we do is for this we take the maximum of this and some value here which does not exist for here we take ma value maximum of this and probably somewhere here for this like something like this right so instead of building it in a new separate array we build it on itself and how do i build it on itself is that so if i build this first okay if i build the new this first and then i build this one then i might double use use the new index two times new element two times because i took the maximum here using either considering to take it or not take it maybe i got maximum by taking it and then if here also i'm considering the maximum by taking it and it happens to land here then i will use it twice so instead of going from left to right we just build from right to left and this is what right this is what that dp is now i plan to not waste too much time on this because it is available everywhere the main the main thing about this problem was being able to use this okay so now how we do that we maintain a 1d array okay and uh, this is having the cost now for every element so first of all we process one and we check go from the right so what we said dpij equals to maximum of dpij and j is i is nothing really so dpj and whatever the weight of one is so this so let's say this is j minus three so maximum of j minus three plus the value i am getting by using current element or whatever the original value was and i do it in reverse order once i'm done with the current element i move on to the next element and i keep doing this and then this will give me the final dp value which i want which is dp and k from th this one so let's look at the implementation i think this thing really helped me like first of all assuming that i know oh wait i have still not explained one thing uh yes so we don't know how to optimally go from one to some value bi right so initially every value of a is one we want to see what is the optimal way to reach bi right so let's say b1 b2 b3 bn how to do that well to do that we can do what so let's look at first of all to understand it a little understand the operation a little bit if i do the operation with x equals to 1 i go from 1 to 2 because i do 1 plus 1 divided by 1 which is 2 and then i can go from 2 to 3 or 4 because 2 plus 2 by 2 or 2 plus 2 by 1 so this gives me 3 this gives me 4 and then from here i can go to uh, 5 6 i can go to 7 i can go to 8 i think can i go to 7 i don't know uh okay i don't want to waste time using that but so as you can see i build up so some have some, the same values and some have the same value right but uh, then it could be some now look at this like let's say look at 15 how do i know what is the optimal way to reach there is it going from 8 to 15 or 6 to 15 or 9 to 15 we don't really know right and since we don't know that we apply dp because bi bi are bounded by 1e3 so what i can do is for 1 to 1e3 i calculate what is so from 1 to 1e3 i calculate what is the minimum number of operations required to reach from 1 to that value i so dp this new dp i dp1 would be 0 because i'm already at 0 then how dp i would be calculated so dp i this would be calculated as the minimum of dp j where j is less than i so i only go to i from something less than it and also such that 
I can jump from J to I. So, for example, I cannot jump from seven to uh, let's say eleven. I cannot jump from seven to eleven because I will require four, and there is no number that divides this to get me four. Slow division, obviously, because if I divide it by two, I get three. If I divide it by three, I get two. One. If I divide it by one, I get seven. So I do not really get it. So something which is less than i and something that is jumpable to i. So that's how I build the DP and how to efficiently calculate what can jump to something. So let's take seven and nine. Okay, the distance between them is two. So I want to jump two. So I want to divide this by something that gives us two. So if I divide this by two, the floor division, I get three. And then I then then if I divide it by three, I will get two. Okay, so that means I needed three. However, this doesn't always work. For example, if I wanted to go to eleven, then the distance is four. Now seven divided by four would give me one. But if I divide seven by one, I will get seven. So that means there is no operation. So th there is no jump possible here. No single hop possible to eleven. So this is what it is. And let's look at the submission. Now, because there are multiple test cases, what I can do is calculate the weight of reaching from one to one e three in uh, a global scope, which is my pre-solved function, which is called before every test case. So here's what I'm doing: w one is zero, and then from two to n, I check for every j less than i. This is the distance. This is x. J divided by d. If x is zero, continue because I have to further divide it by x. If x is zero, then I will get infinity. So that is obviously wrong. And then if it is not equals to d, j divided by x, right? That's how we were checking, right? So seven by two gave me three, and then seven by three gave me two. So if that is also not pos, if that does not give me d, right? The distance that I want to cover, then continue. Otherwise, I am able to take use it. And I take the minimum. Yeah, obviously. So D P J plus one because whatever operations took to reach J, I take one more. And then here is the knapsack. So I have N and K. I take an input B and C. Then this is my D P single array D P. Weight is W of B I. So how many operations it takes to reach B I? And then value is the C I. And then I do the DP. So I iterate from the right side from k to up till j minus w t does not go out of bounds. So it's like this, right? So if it goes out of bounds, so negative one, it's not doable. And uh, so take the maximum of j or j minus weight plus value, and then I print the maximum value that is DP k. That was it. So this combined. Two types of DP. One was a simple n square. One was a knapsack with space optimization. It was a pretty nice problem, I would say. So yeah, with that said, hope you understood it, and uh, I'll see you next time. Please subscribe, I guess. Please. I'm not really getting any subscribers. Come on, I should be at 10k right now. What are you guys doing? Yeah. Bye.